All right, Big Bang, welcome to the Mid Show, where we are recording from a Scottsdale, Arizona, Portillo's. Uh, shout out to Portillo's. We're here. We're having a great We're right time. At home. We got our beefs on the table. We got fries. We got the cheese sauce. We got the drinks. And uh, the store just opened. So as we record, people are just going to be filtering in. And uh, hopefully, uh, at one point, we'll be joined by Lance Briggs. Uh, he's supposed to stop by. We'll talk to Briggs, uh, you know, talk some bears. Oh, look at that cheese look saw. At look that at that steam, steam. Ed. Look at that steam right <laughs> no, there. That, can that, we can zoom in on that That's camera? no joke. Can, can you they, zoom in can, on the air yeah, around can, the fry? Can you zoom in on steam? Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, I should, you can probably zoom. Oh, nope. lost. It doesn't oh, matter. We'll get another right. We're good. Later. We're good. We got it. We got unlimited supplies of Portillo's here. Uh, so, hey, listen, you guys know Portillo's. Obviously, if you're listening to us from Chicago, uh, an absolute Chicago staple. There's also a ton of Arizona locations. So if you're making uh, the trip to spring training or if you're doing just a uh, maybe a college tour, maybe just a good good old fashioned vacation maybe you're on vacation. Yes. Yeah. You just got to stop at Portillo's. Maybe and, you're uh, in Arizona craving Chicago food. Oh, you got a lab on. You got a lab on. I got worried for a second. I was like, where the hell is Danny's <laughs> mic? Um, <laughs> that freaked me out. We we got we got a few pros back there helping us out. Yeah, so yeah. we figured the best way to do it is we're gonna do a little dog walk snake draft on the mid show, and we're gonna draft Portillo's items to kick off the show. Can I go first? Uh, no, no, we're no, drafting Lance. by order. Yeah, no. what, what was that? Lance <laughs> crossover so episode with all, right. all the same. So here's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be three rounds. Uh, you get three items a person. Uh, so Lance has the number one through four behind his back. Danny, what number is it? Three. Chief. Two. One. Dave. Four. Lucky guess. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure, Ed. What are you looking at it for now? Yeah, you got to just pick your draft order. I know. I'm just like, what do I really... Uh, you don't know the menu by heart? I got. I do know the menu by heart. I'm going to... You know what? I'll take... Uh, I'll take the number two pick. Okay. All right. All right. One through three, Danny. Three. Chief. Two. One. I'll All go right. number one. All right. One or two, Danny. Two. All right, you're on three or four. I will go four. All right, yeah, so the around. order is White Sox, Dave, Eddie, Chief, Danny. So without further ado, White Sox, Dave, you're on the clock. Italian beef. Can't go wrong. <laughs> Can't go wrong. <laughs> hey, Dave, great pick. Great pick. Hot peppers, sweet pepper, peppers. Dump all the au jus in it. I want gallons of au jus on it. It's, it's, it's your heavy hitter. It's the best thing they got. Not, not that everything else isn't great, but it's Italian beef. What, what's there to go? What can I say more about a Portillo's and, Italian beef? And if we're talking in the realm of Arizona, probably the only place you can get an Italian beef. Yeah, Just at least chew right like, in that mic. Keep chewing. Least, mm-hmm. There we go. At least like legitimate. So yeah, um, good pick. You get the big beef and the regular beef combination. I do think there's a different beef that's still on the board because it's a different entity. Oh yeah, right. definitely. Yeah. In my mm-hmm. opinion. All right. Yep. Uh, I'm up number two pick. I got to go with the cheese fries. I'm a sucker for a good All crinkle right. cut. And Portillo's does a fantastic crinkle cut. If you were taking strategy into account, that should have been the number one pick. Yeah. Because if you're looking at sides, the fry is the king of the sides. The main the main dish, the like Italian beef's great, but they got a million great things. I do. So if you're just based on strategy alone, filling out your board, having having the crinkle cut fry is elite. It is. And there's, there's also a couple other great sides. But the fry is the showstopper. And so, you know, so when you're a little hungry, you're like, I'm going with the red box. You can know? I, yeah. Can I tell you guys something about the shape of these fries? Yeah, what's up? There's science involved behind these. So, <laughs> with the crinkle cut, more surface area on the fries, more, more cheesy, gooey goodness on them when you dip them. Can I ask a, a question for point uh-huh. of, for clarification? It's the most aggressive dip I've ever yeah. seen. WSD, the S is for science. I'm in the zone right now. Just be I, gentle. Just, it's okay to go gentle once in a while, David. He wants some finger cheese. Um, Look at it. He does. You took cheese fries specifically, so are for other fries just no, regular no, fries no, without no. cheese? I took fries with the cheese. That's what the cheese is here for. It's for the fries. So yeah, I'm going with the fries cheese. Here too. Yeah, that's all right. That's that's a side. That's a free. That's a free sample. That's out in the. Let uh, Chief take ketchup. Yeah, take just ketchup. No, I don't straight want up. to take just ketchup, but I'll take fries with ketchup. Um, so I'm pumped to get the crinkle cut. Yeah, all right, Chief, you're one, up. one cheese fry of all cheese fries. Yeah, great cheese fry. Number three. All right, I'm going with the thing I get the most at Portillo's. I think it's slept on. I've talked about it before. I'm taking the burger. The burger is elite. Um, I don't want another version of Dave's pick uh, in the first round, so I'm taking the burger, and. Uh, I think it, it is the best fast food burger. It, it is truly, truly elite. I love Portillo's burgers. So I couldn't agree more. Happy to have it. 
Yeah, it's like one of those things. You go to like an Italian restaurant. It's like, ah, I don't know. You ever have like the gyro? And it's like, wait, what are you getting that there for? Right, it's like, right. It's really good. Yeah. But it truly is awesome. Flame broiled. We saw how they're made. They're fantastic. Here, here's the thing, too. Like, I, you get all burgers, like, but, you know, because that's the same category. But their bacon is great, too. A lot of places ruin the bacon on yep. a burger. Portillo's does it right. It's, it's a not nice, burned. thick cut. Yeah, it's not. Nice. I mean, it's not. No, it's not really thick. It's like it's just nice and thin and squiggly. So, uh, I love the burger in the first round. Some people might argue that, being like, that's not a staple. I like it. It's, it's, it's a staple it, for me. It, yeah. Obviously, Portillo's is known for their hot dogs and their Italian beef, but the Are burger, like picks? Ryan said. It's the yeah. absolute. Picks, it's the absolute. It's which, the absolute best fast food burger in in the game. Leads us to Danny, which you, you said it, Dave. I'm going my first pick. I'm going Chicago style hot dog. Give me all seven ingredients on it: mustard, relish, onion, spore, pepper, pickle, celery, salt, pressure, mustard, relish, onion, spore, pepper, pickle, celery, salt. Am I missing one? Did you get seven? I don't know. I didn't count. <laughs> Pickle, pickle <laughs> celery, salt, tomato. Oh, okay. okay. I was just, you Ooh. love this trivia Obviously question, bun. so you better know. Yep. Uh, can't, can't beat a Chicago-style hot dog, especially from Portillo's. So with my second pick, in the second round, I feel really good taking Cake Shake. Oh, okay. Cake Shake and... It's a novelty item. Can't get it anywhere Hot dog back-to-back. Back. That's great value at the four and five. Great pick. value. Great value. Feeling that's, good. That's a nice slide for Danny. That, you know, Danny's got a hard one-two punch to beat right now. He does. Yeah, I feel good. Though. I know what I'm. I know what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm, I'm taking the so beef combo. Up. Taking the combo. Let's go I, pick. I ate it yesterday. The brat with the beef. Just when you think the beef. Italian cake, sausage with the beef. Chief, get it so- right. Sorry, wow. David. Italian sausage with the beef. I ate what it. What did he yes- say? He said brat. brat. We're gonna oh. have to Oof. bleep that out. Oof. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever. Oof. Oof. Sausage. With the beef, when you think the beef can't get better, and then like yesterday, I thought it was a beef. I didn't see the sausage like hidden underneath there. Took a bite, I'm like, oh, this is even better. So get that nice crack yeah, of fennel. Yeah, that. Yep. Sneakily, sneakily, one of the best picks for its value. That's a twofer right there. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. So like the beef was kind of off the board. Besides, there's still another beef out there. There oh. is. Just so people know, there's still another Portillo's staple beef. Mm, Got to catch them all. That's a good one. Can I make an admission? Yeah. Sure. I went with the pander pick with my first pick. I usually go combo because I love their Italian sausage. You should have won the combo. It's the same thing. I oh, understand. You I understand. Number 10. What do you what get? Do you get? What do you think he got? Uh, let's see. Uh, this we'll guy's that's like, a beef. what is going on <laughs> here? Going? That's a beef? I came for a casual one. Looks like it. We know it's good. All right, All right. so you got the combo. Yep. White Sox, Dave, what are you taking uh, with your next pick? Ed, you're a chief. Oh, I'm, chief a, I'm a, sorry. No, my apologies. Yeah, Ed's up. My apologies. Um. All right, listen. I swear by this. Like, all right, I, I respect the original per, the Portillo's hot dog, but I think their jumbo is better. You ever had their jumbo? I don't think I have actually. Their jumbo is awesome. Like right. a nice Polish. It's 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 thicker, and I, I don't know. I just, I just like the flavor a lot. Obviously, the original is great too. But if you go to Portillo's, mix in the jumbo. See what you think about. It's the just jumbo. like a different I, experience. I've been a man of jumbo hot dogs. Yes, too. I Ed, love the Portillo's jumbo. I don't know that I've ever had it. I got a question for you. Yeah. Can you tell me about the snap on that dog? It's great. It's great, Dave. It, it, and it's one of the, well, it's actually, I think the regular one's a little more snappy. Uh, it's but, hard to, you know, yeah, yeah. keep the snap yeah. as you get bigger. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm fine with that. I like a little less snap, so that's why I like the jumbo. Um, so that was kind of my uh, bend around the rules, I, I guess. I, 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 I still get the hot dog. It's like if someone, you took a burger and someone's like a double burger. But it, it's two <laughs> different It's two different products, I promise you. If we lined up a regular Patel's hot dog and a jumbo, they you'd be able to be like, yeah, there's different. Mm-hmm. Fair. Right. So that's my pick. Dave. You so everyone knows I'm the, took a large yeah. <laughs> I'm the beacon of health. <laughs> that's not the same. <laughs> everyone knows I'm the beacon of health. Yes. Uh, yes I love yes. clean eating. So on that note, I'm going to go with the chopped salad. Ah, great pick. It's my pick. favorite. Salad's, it's the best salad Favorite salad. On planet Earth, doesn't matter if you're here at like a five star restaurant. It, Have you ever it's tried to recreate the it? The best. I can't at do home? that. It's impossible. Yeah, I've tried because the, the ingredients impossible. you know all of them. Just uh, some noodles, uh, bacon, uh, blue cheese, obviously romaine lettuce, amongst other veggies and stuff. I can't do it. Salads. I can never make good salads though. I can never make good salads on my own. I just leave it up to Portillo's. A chopped salad, bingo bango. All right, so you got it's beef, chopped salad. Now take us into the third round, David. Uh, what do I want to go with with the third round? I'm going to go with, you know, I do like the cheap meal here and there. I'm going to go with the onion rings for my side. Mm. Onion rings are great. That's what I was saying. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, the fries are first and foremost usually draft, you know, picked maybe seven times out of ten. But 
the onion rings are great to mix in. Yeah. They're great to mix in. And you know what? I'd love if they did a mix. I would definitely get a mix here. It's nice I, when you get that little surprise ring or fry in yes. the fries or rings. Yes. Um, I always just get both because okay. you know you're going to want a little bit of each. So just get both. Mm -hmm. Get the fries and the rings. All right. So Dave's, Dave's, I, I like your, I like your picks. Uh, my third pick, I'm going to go in the dessert section, but I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do. I I'm going to take the eclair cake. I not, not the original chocolate cake. Yeah. The eclair cake. We'll get it by the time this is over. I like it more than a regular chocolate cake. Obviously, the chocolate cake is a classic. It's the original. It's Godfather. The eclair cake is Godfather 2. It's that good. If you ever go to Portillo's, I gave you two. Well, not, not hacks, but I gave you the jumbo and I gave you the eclair cake. They're both different from like the more popular ones, but I really like them. I think they're really good. Good pick, Ed. Oh, God. I have not had it. I can't wait to right, sink so my we'll, meaty, do a meaty live, mouth into live it. Review. Yeah. It's got that it's got like that graham cracker like mm -hmm. consistency. Ooh, yeah. I like it, that. It's really good. Uh so uh Chief, you're up. All right, I'm going off the board. I'm going off the menu. I'm taking the Lent special. I'm taking those pepper egg Friday sandwiches. Those are elite. I want to get one this Friday. Why are you laughing at that? I mean, because you can't even not chief a uh, yeah, a yeah. Fake you draft. don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> off the menu fish sandwich. Yeah, just, it's not a fish sandwich. Yeah. What did you say? Fish pepper egg. Pepper egg. I mean, yeah. sorry. Oh, regular in a jumbo. Perfect. Oh, wow. All right, All right let's see. Get... Let's see the comparison. All right, here we go. Wait, but we we can't let the sh let the shine go away from the. Uh, the chief pick right yeah. there, right? Well, that was a good pick. Dave, you don't like an egg sandwich, huh? Can no, you, I love egg sandwiches. I know you do. Can you admit that you eat those more than just Fridays during lunch? I don't know. A pepper and egg sandwich is great. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, yes. Okay. But they're See, like, Dave. I feel yeah, like that's they... Jumbo. Oh, yeah. that is... Can I give a live review? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're here for. That oh. looks like it would have some snap. Yeah. Why don't you two Lady in the Tramp that thing? <laughs> I'm telling you, but I, I, I prefer with a little, a little less. Yeah, snap. do the Lady so in the Tramp. Like we'll it. share it. Come on, let's do a little Lady <laughs> in the Tramp. No, no Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> Come on, no Ed, lady one in the time. Tramp. Wow. I'll do it. Will you lady All right, you I'll Lady in the it. Tramp. I, I want you guys to try it. It's a good... <laughs> <laughs> that was romantic. Oh, Edit that out. That's that too... delicious. That's too hot for Rumble and uh, YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> that is hot. Coming to Barstool yeah. Chicago only fans. Yeah, right? Really it's good. different, though. It's different. Yeah. It's I like that. It's a large. Yes. Um, can we do the? Can we do it a Claire cake, too? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're just like, we're just firing it up. He's just ordering the house. Um, all right. So, pepper and egg. I mean, it's what? it's remarkable how you just can't stop getting in front of your That's own. That's an awesome item. It's delicious. Chief's right, got the sure. Catholic vote. Yeah. <laughs> For four Fridays a year, it's great. All right. Uh, Danny, Mr. Irrelevant. It's nice that they do that. I love a specialty item. You know it what is I'm nice, but that's a Chicago tradition. Like Dick Portillo looked down. Oh, there oh, we go. Strawberry you. shortcake. Not bad, too. Um, Danny, Mr. Irrelevant. That looks like a little... Is it, she said shortcake? No, little, that's a shortcake. I was gonna, that's a little tiramisu. Here so you go. Eclair or is that, oh, that's the eclair. Dave, dig in. Um, I was between a couple picks for my last one. I want to add some diversity, and I, uh, I know you wanted to mention this at some point, so I'm going to take the beef and cheddar croissant. Yeah. I need some beef on my board. That, it, it's it? a completely different thing. Oh, and awesome. that's one of those things. How good is that? <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> it's kind of like tiramisu, but it's like its own. It's not coffee flavored, though. No, you know, but it's, it's, got like, like, it's, got it's got the graham crackers, the filling, yes. and the chocolate. Chief I mean, We need a close of David Mustard around his mouth eating cake at, <laughs> at 11 a.m. I just lady in the tramp to Jumbo Dog. Get yeah. away from me. David is, my ass. David is an aggressive boy, and he doesn't stop for anyone. Okay. Have you had it, Danny? No. All right, I love to try in, it. Hop in. Don't be shy. Well, I remember our first time. Don't be shy. That is fantastic. Well, right. How would I not even know that? Micro microphone, you know, microphone. You wouldn't think that. What'd you say, Chief? It was fantastic. Yeah. I didn't know. I don't know how I went my yeah. whole life mm. never trying that. Do you like it better than the chocolate cake? Mm. I might. The I'm, chocolate shake, uh, the well, the cake, chocolate cake shake, and the chocolate cake slices are elite. That is so slick. It's, it's like picking your favorite child. Yeah, you can't do it. Everyone's got. The I think. I, I think I'm going with that. I told I you. Think I'm, going I'm with telling that. you, it's a sleeper. It's Did they such put a that sleeper. in a milkshake? I don't know. It's a good question. That'd be really good if they did. <laughs> got a new idea. We got some ideas cooking over here. Well, you know, just... Any Claire shake now. 
Oh, okay. okay. So they do the strawberry shortcake okay. and the milkshake, not the eclair. Yet. I, would, I would like to something to think of a vanilla I, shake with that chocolate. Portillo's put it in the tickler file. Yeah, to, yeah. to uh, yeah. make a uh, eclair cake milkshake. Maybe a limited. For, we'll, let's focus group, yes, we'll yes. focus group it. Yeah, we'll focus group it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Back to the uh, beef and cheddar croissant. Mm-hmm. I typically don't like cheese on a beef. I'm a traditionalist, but they're so smart that they created a different new thing. It's on a croissant, so you can put cheese on it. It's right. different. You it know? It's a loophole. So, yes, it's a loophole, and I like the Ortillos did that. It's a mind so game. So it's good. Yeah. So right now, if we're looking at the boards, Dave was first. Dave had the Italian beef, he had the chopped salad, and onion he rings. had the onion rings. I went second. I got the cheese fries, the jumbo hot dog, and the eclair cake. Chief went third. Chief got the burger, the combo, and the uh, pepper, pepper and egg <laughs> sandwich. Uh, it's a great pick. Fourth was Danny. <laughs> Danny took the uh, Chicago style hot dog, Chicago style hot dog, ch- chocolate cake shake, and then the beef and cheddar yep, croissant. Correct. Everybody wins. We're not voting anyone. Honorable mention I mean, the I, Polish. That was the plan, but I kind of want to vote Chief off just for the <laughs> just no, for the just for, just the, for the pepper and, and egg. Giggles. I like yeah. it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with the menu here. And I was about to say, like that piece of cake right there is one of the best I've ever touched. Those in Chicago know that. The chocolate cake at, at Portillo is randomly, I will say, because it's you know a, a Italian beef and hot dog place has the best chocolate cake on planet Earth, and that's like a well known fact. Their dessert is just incredible, apparently all across the board. I'm so, obviously you can hell. tell I, I spend a lot of time at this place. I know these secret menu items, so uh, I if anyone's out there, give them a whack because they're great. I, I'm stunned how awesome that yes. is. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's the, like the best cup secret they have. That frosting is awesome, yes. too. Yeah. Yes, they're it's great. Let's not make it a secret. Let's turn it into gossip. Yeah. Everybody Honorable mention, uh, like you said, the, the, the Polish. Polish Polish is great. Uh, chicken sandwich is really good. Yes, I like it is. Chicken yes, sandwich is. is good. Chicken tenders are good. Yes. I don't know why they used to call them chicken nudies. Oh, did they? Yeah. Like I feel like the one that uh, one in Batavia on Randall Road, because mm-hmm. that's what my brother would always get when he was a kid. And I would always try to like trade him, like give me three fries for a slice of that chicken nudie, and <laughs> they, you know, and he would fall for it every time. But the, yeah, the chicken tenders are great too. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it literally, it's one of those places. Like Ad Reed aside, I've been saying this to just Chicagoans and friends forever. They just do everything really well. It's so, like uh, for Chicago, it's like the equivalent of a kid in a candy shop. You yeah, you can have everything. You it want. really is. You could just stop it. Everyone's happy. If he's and feeling a Arizona's. burger, he's feeling a beef. He's feeling a dog, and I just want a dessert. Here you come to Portillo. So. I feel like they should do one day a year where you just drive through and they pick what you're eating. Yeah, just like, like just a random every, roulette. Everything's good. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know what? You're getting the combo today. You're getting the burger. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a shuffle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So visit your local Portillo's or go to Portillo's.com to order your Chicago dog for pickup or delivery or anything we draft. Catering especially. You can do that, too, if you yeah. have yeah. a cheese. Oh, yeah. I should have taken a cheese fountain. That would have been oh, a winner. Oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, Portillo's, it always sounds good. There's a bunch of locations in Arizona. They also have a secret menu item here. Well, not secret. It's on their menu. How many oh, total? Here, is this it? But they don't have it in oh, Chicago. Oh, in the flesh. There it is. Perfect timing. Chili Little cheese fries. Chili, chili, chili cheese, cheese fries. fries for the people in Arizona. Another thing that Southwest is awesome here. Beautiful. Their chili's fantastic. Yeah, they do soup as well. Chicken that. noodle. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, that could have been bad. It's good. Oh, yeah. That was good. That no, is good out, chili. Shout out to Portillo's. Um, of course, we do want to say before we move on, I think Lance Briggs will be joining us soon. Um, we do want to uh, talk about our uh, good friends at Miller Lite as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Miller Lite, um, pretty sure listen, Lance. what would you say? Lance is here. What did you say? Briggs is, Briggs is approaching. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Sure, yeah. We can just, we just get into it now. Um, Oh, there he is. Yeah. Uh, so Miller Lite, uh, no matter how you celebrate St. Patrick's Day, it's a great excuse to gather with friends and crack open a cold one. Enjoy these moments with Miller Lite. It was an, it's the original light beer, and it's still the best one. Miller Lite has more of the taste you want and less of the stuff you don't. Doing a great promotion, like I've been saying this whole time. Uh, you could go on the uh, the boat with them and see how the rivers died. Up close and personal. It's it's a great experience. It really is. Totally unique. It really is. So Chicago River died green up close and personal on the Miller Lite party boat. It's down to your chance to win. Visit MillerLite.com slash Chicago St. Pat's. No purchase necessary. Promotion ends on March 1st. So legitimately, go do to it, it today. Hustle awesome. yes. up. You got Don't, a day. Uh, you, you got, got a day. Yeah. You got yeah. to the end of the... It's, it's, till the end of February. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
And it's uh, open only to legal residents of Illinois and Indiana who are 21 years or older. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brown Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Shout out to Miller Lite. Obviously, we're going to be out here in Arizona. We're going to be having some great tasting, less yep. fillings. And uh, we're going to be having a good time with Miller Lite as well as Portillo. So... Uh, shout out to them. And on that note, Lance Briggs has just showed up. So Lance let's hop Briggs. into the Lance Briggs portion. All right, so here we are. You just heard us say we are joined by Chicago Bears legend, Lance Briggs. Lance, thank you so much for coming, dude. My pleasure, man. Yeah, My pleasure, man. We got a nice it. little uh, foray of food here. It's yeah. like a Thanksgiving know? feast here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Chicago in, uh, in Arizona. All right, Lance, so we're not going to uh, bury the lead here. Uh -huh. here. Here's the question. All right. You are the Chicago Bears general manager. Yep. What are you doing with the number one pick? Who is our quarterback next year? Number one pick, I'm going to trade back. Whoa. Um, I'm going to trade back. Yep. Wow. I'm going to load up on picks. Okay. Um, when I look at what we, what we currently have and I look at the situation that we've put our, our current quarterback in, you know, two different uh, head coaches, three offensive coordinators, and, and trying to build talent, mm -hmm. you know, what I saw – in this, especially in this last year, I've seen enough to know that we can build around this guy, you know. Um, and I also know that that this this past season was the first season where where we started to our talent level started to gain a little bit, you know what I mean? A little we, bit. We, we we added some pieces to our offensive line, you know. We added some pieces to our our, our defensive line, especially during a year with Montez Sweat. And I saw a lot of improvement. I saw consistency from our defense, improved consistency, and I saw a 1,000-yard uh, receiver. Okay? Yeah. So with that being said, let's load, it, let's load this team up the best we can. Okay. And, if, and if the, at the worst, let's say at the worst, shoot, we have two first-rounders over the next three, four years. If things don't work out, get someone we'll, else. we'll get a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a quarterback in 2025, 2026. What's the minimum you would take, though? How many first-rounders are, are, would you be comfortable with? You're the general manager. Two, three, more? I mean, I want as many as I can get. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I want as many yeah. as I can get. Yeah. I want, I want picks in the second round. I want picks in the third round. You know, this, this, this year. I want to build this team as fast as possible. So, we'll, you know. The, and the good thing is – You get good players in the third round. You can get great, player, great players <laughs> yeah, in the great third players, round. Great players, yeah. <laughs> but you can – there's a possibility to trade back two or two, two, at least two times in the top ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, is that more um, because you like Justin Fields or just because you're bullish on the opportunity you could build with more first-round picks? Or do you not uh, like Caleb? No, no it's it, – I don't, I don't see a quarterback right now that – is so outstanding that that it, it justifies getting rid of this guy to get this guy. You know, the, the quarterback that I like the most, honestly, is Michael Penix. Okay. I, like Michael, I like Michael Penix, okay. and he's a different style of quarterback than Justin totally, Fields. Totally, yeah. You know, Caleb is too like, too much like uh, uh, Justin Fields. You know, it, it's, it's trading one for another. Mm -hmm. And so, and to me, none of the other quarterbacks – are in that calib that that caliber, you know. So the only one that I really like is Michael Penix, and I don't think that's a guy that the Bears are targeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it Marvin Harrison then? Trade back to three. All right, so fellas, lay it all out. Lay here's it, the, here's, it to me, here's baby. The, I, I I don't like talking about the draft before free agency. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah, we yeah, can talk right. everything that we say right now about the draft, and then we see free agency, and we're like, oh, yeah, they got Mike Evans. You know. It, 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 Changes it kills it. Yeah. our conversation. Right. Yeah. So for me, it's about the free agency. What, what are we going to do in free agency? Mm -hmm. The Bears go and they say, all right, we're going to get Mike Evans. That doesn't – You're right. Then we, You're we right. don't worry about Mike, uh, uh, Harrison, yeah. you know? So it's – to me, it's about what happens in, in free agency and what we can do. And with the cap being greater than what it was, the Bears can really go after somebody or a couple somebodies. Yep. They got about eighty million available. Oh so yeah, third yeah. highest cap space. It went up, yeah, because yeah. yeah, because of Jackson and Whitehead. Yep. So mm -hmm. what about um, what, what about the head coach? When, when you see the head coach, Fluce. yeah, you you played for about as tight of a head coach as you can have, yeah. and then you played for one that maybe not so much. Oh, you're talking about uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the Trespan era, <laughs> right? Respectfully, but yeah, let's call yeah, let's right. call it straight. Like you're that's right. You're right. Was, I mean, yeah. shoot, I played for Dick Duran too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Duran, Dick Duran right? was all he to me. He was he was along the, the that that same levy structure. 
Okay. You know, I like playing for uh, for him. I like playing for Lovey. Yeah. Mark was just a different guy. Yeah. You know, smart guy, just not a great leader of men. Yeah. You know, um, Flus, this is the way I evaluate Flus. I evaluate Flus on the, the locker room and the way that his team has performed. You know, and, and uh, the, the first game of last year, I was really disappointed with him. I was really disappointed yeah. with the effort. You know, but more than anything else, the effort that was put out there. And seeing all the stuff that was going on, coaches getting fired, you know, just a just bunch of crap chaos. going on. Chaos. chaos. A lot of chaos. Yeah. When he took over the defense, you saw a gradual progression. Mm-hmm. And they consistently played. And then you brought you add in Montez Sweat, and they go on this run and we're leading the whole NFL in takeaways. Yep. Okay? That's what sticks out. The um, – I saw improvement offensively. You know, there were obviously their their games where we're like, what what are we doing? We're gonna throw bubble screens all game long. Yeah. You know? It was infuriating. It was it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. <clears throat> but I saw improvement. Yeah. I saw enough improvement to say, okay, we're building something. And to me, if we're building something, if you want to win now, then what are you willing to roll the dice on? Or what do you want to want to build? To me, I look at San Francisco and I see a Brock Purdy that's sitting right pretty amongst a, yeah. a, a super talented team and they play in the Super Bowl. Yep. Now you put Justin Fields in that in that in the middle of that talent, we're gonna win the Super Bowl. Yeah. With that's the way I see it. Mm-hmm. You've I, seen how hyper polarized everybody especially on social all Bears fans on social media have been about the quarterback position. In spite of them, what I say being in a great position, because you got the choice of, you know, anywhere from Williams, Penix, yeah. Fields, a free agent maybe. Yeah. So we talked to Alex Brown like I don't know, three weeks ago. We were saying this before you, you hopped on the mic. And, oh, that scares me. <laughs> he's in the exact opposite direction that you are. He's like, oh, yeah. we're drafting Caleb Williams. I've seen enough of Fields. Do you guys like all the, all the, you know, the older tight guys, do you guys all have the same conversations us fans are having? What's that like group text Cole? like? Yeah. Well, the group text, it would – I would I would think that Peanut would 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 side with me, mm-hmm. you know, um, and Alex is somewhere off on an island by himself, right? <laughs> which I think he likes. I think <laughs> Alex yeah, likes yeah, yeah. on his own island. No, here's the, here's the thing, you know, and I and me and Alex are going back. We go back and forth on this, yeah. and and I told him I said, listen, I've I've watched Caleb Williams since he got his first start. I was in Durango, Colorado yeah, okay. at a bar, you know what I mean? And and because I wanted to make sure that I could see all the games. Mm-hmm. And um and Rattler, Spencer was starting. Yeah. They pulled him and put Caleb in, and Caleb made some amazing plays. You know, he escaped the pocket. It was a bad fumble. He picked the fumble up, scrambled and threw the ball. It was it was it was amazing to watch. Yeah. Um and I'm like, when I watched him from the very beginning to to this last year, I'm like he reminds me of Justin Fields. Yeah. I'm just telling you, he reminds me of Justin Fields. He just doesn't win the big games. You know, so if you want to evaluate him, don't evaluate him just on this year. You got to evaluate his whole deal. You know, and so it went from that to, all right, well, you know, I like Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is having a great year. You know, he's at LSU. I say, well, I've been watching him since he was at ASU. Yeah. All right. And when the talent level was even, he didn't play so well. Even this year in the mm-hmm. early games, he almost yep. got pulled. Yep. He almost got pulled, yep. you know? So I'm like, you, you, you don't want to go after the hot name or the hot thing. You know what I mean? You really have to do your due diligence, you know? And so if you want to get Caleb, Caleb Williams, tell me exactly why you want to get Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? sell you on it. Right, you yeah. have to, right. Because yeah. I'm not sold. Yeah. I'm not sold on him. I'm not sold. The only quarterback that I'm telling you right now that I'm sold on is Michael Penix. Okay. And he's got a lot of injuries. He's got all that stuff, but... When you watch him on film, I'm like, he can he can move. He can sling it. He won me over the course oh, yeah, courts of this year too. I feel like right? he he was he was awesome to watch. Yeah. And yeah. Then by the end of the year, you're like he's undeniable. He's undeniable. Yeah, right? yeah. He can sling it. He's got a future for sure. Yeah. I want to go back to that comment you made about Flues, how how you were very disappointed in him week one. Yeah. I was just as disappointed at yeah. the end of the year in that against the Packers. And I was one and that kind of tainted or or skewed my view. It's like, you know, I'm ready to move on from him. Was there something you saw in that game where you're like, nah, like we're gonna put push this one away? Because yeah. it felt like you had all the momentum. It's Lambeau Field, it's the Packers where you know we could spoil it for them and they laid an egg. Yeah, so they, is that not an, an indictment too in your eyes? Well they laid an egg they laid an egg off of 
a, a month and a half of really good football. Yeah. You know, I mean, they laid an egg, and it just so happens that it's the Packers. And you know how we all feel about that. You know, it sucks. There's – there's a mental block that we have to get over dealing with, and it starts with the Packers. Yeah. Well, I, I really – I wish we had the Packers game one next year to try to break that mental block going into the season, you know? Slay that dragon. Dude, it's, it's a big deal, yeah. right? Dude, what is it, though? Like, like you – like, I think I looked up your record. I, I think overall against the Packers, you were a little under 500, and in Lambeau, yeah. you were a little under 500. What is it? About going into that stadium. It goes from and coach like, to coach. And team like, to team yeah, like what too, is yeah. it that makes it so hard? Like, well, I started against Brett Favre, yeah. ended against Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. But, you know, and now they, they're transitioning into a Jordan Love, you know. And so for us Bear fans, it's like, damn. Like, it's not how, fair. Are, how are they so great at picking talent and it's we're not? not right. right. It's not fair. Um, but that also goes to, you know, that's why we put Justin Fields in so much question. Yeah. Because we've seen so many bad quarterbacks at the first sign of something that doesn't look right. We're like, we need somebody else. We got to get somebody else. We got to get, we got to get something else in here. And, um, and to me, I, number one, I don't see a quarterback right now that I think can lead our team better than him right now. That's how okay. that, 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 that we'd have to trade, that we wouldn't have to trade everybody mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, like we have to trade everybody to get maybe a CJ Shroud or something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, and what other people don't, I don't think they realize is how rare Patrick Mahomes is. How rare CJ Stroud yep. may become. Mm-hmm. You know, CJ Stroud had a hell of a year. I, there's no sign that says that he's going to slow down in what in the type of quarterback no, he, looks he is. Special. Right. Yeah. But they're very few. You know, they're they're few. But what about the theory? You just got to keep buying lottery tickets until you hit one. You know? I would love see. That's why I like trading back. That's why I like trading back. A little lower, because obviously Dak was drafted later. Yeah. Uh, obviously Purdy was Mr. Rel- there are guys who have had success getting drafted in the later rounds that weren't first rounders. So yeah. that's kind of what a better strategy you like. I yeah. like I like the position the Bears are in because they potentially could have two first rounders for the next four years. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. And if that's the case, you can get your 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 quarterback if it doesn't work out. You can get a quarterback in in two three years. Yeah. It's just the problem is. The way people are talking about this guy, it's like if you go back to this draft, like he'd be the first rounder. If you go back to this draft, he'd be over Trevor Lawrence. Like I think I'd take him over Luck. You know how hard it's been at the quarterback position for our city for so long. You know more than anyone. You played on the other side of it for twelve years. <laughs> yeah, do some heavy, about twenty five some heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like about twenty five of them. Yeah. If this guy goes on to be, you know, obviously we we could add Stroud, we traded out, we could add Mahomes, we could add Watson. If he turns out to be that. I don't know how we're going to live in this city and root for this team, man. That's exactly why I don't think they're going to pass up on him again, especially after what Stroud just did. I think that's in Poles' head. Yeah, like I just it's passed on Stroud. Yeah, I can't. Tr- I can't have the number one pick again and trade out. All right, fair enough. Fair right. enough, man. Here's here's the thought. Here's the thought. You know, um, the league. The league, they're they're always trying to find that guy. Yeah. You know, and what you end up doing is you get you get caught up in the Joneses. You know, you get caught up, okay, he's really good. Okay, now we gotta go find it too. And we're gonna we're gonna take a chance on this guy. You know, because this guy has all the potential in the world. We're gonna trade our draft and we're gonna get a guy named Mitchell Trubisky. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's got all the potential in the world. All right, and he could be great. And we lay another egg for three years. You gotta sometimes understand that. The Bears process isn't – it's not the Texans process. Yeah. It's not the Chiefs process. You know what I mean? It's the Bears process. We have to do it our way. You yeah. know, we have to do it the best way we can. We can't do it trying to chase what these guys got. That scares me. It, it does scare <laughs> me. It scares the shit out of me too. Because yeah. uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an evaluation process that's, that's missing. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. an evaluation it's process missing. It's been missing from like – our entire, lives. Been, yeah. our entire lives. Yeah. Our entire lives. Our entire lives. Long time. Aside yeah. from like Kyle Orton, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Or, in a, in yeah. a, in a way. Yeah. You I mean, like, he's a late round guy, though. Was he a guy you could like really run out of the tunnel for? Like, did you feel of all the quarterbacks you played with, the offense, was he the, the, the guy or who was the guy where you're like, I feel the best when he's under center? I mean, I like I always like Kyle. Uh, I like yeah. Rex. Yeah. I liked uh, Brian Greasy. Uh-huh. I like Greasy. Uh, I thought for a good time, Greasy gave us the best chance 
to win. Okay. You know, um, shoot, I like Cutler when he came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, we all did. We guys you know I mean? Listen, everybody the, at this table yeah, was oh, happy yeah. when they yeah. heard yeah. Cutler. Yeah. I still like I Cutler. went right? yeah. fucking nuts. I was a sophomore in college. I'm like, they what? Right. Going fucking Do you remember crazy. where you were when you heard about that deal? Uh, I don't remember where I was, but I do remember the beginning of training camp. I remember sitting down with him. And he went over and put a uh, quarter in the in the machine, and uh, and he played uh, "Sex on Fire." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we sat down and we're listening. And I was like, hmm, "Sex on Fire" is what you picked, huh? <laughs> <laughs> of all the songs. Yeah. Like, okay. yeah. That's interesting. Uh, what what was the quarterback where you were like, man? Boys, it's got to be a shutout. We're going to have to win 3 0 with a Robbie Gold field goal. Jonathan Quinn. <laughs> Jonathan Quinn. <laughs> we, yeah, even we, played, we knew that. Listen, we played in, um, we played in Tampa Bay, and uh, it was three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. And Wade Wilson was our, our quarterback's coach. And so we had another three and out, and he's sitting down. He, uh, as we're getting ready to run out, he was like, whew. Defense going out there. We might have a chance to score. That's <laughs> 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 like, going to have to have a big day. <laughs> it's, it's like in the water boy when uh, they intentionally kneel. So oh, yeah. Can, so yeah. 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 Were you guys ever like, like, did you ever go to Devin and be like, hey, like, Devin, we need you. Like, Didn't this, need to say that to him. No? No. Didn't need to say that he to him. He was just ready. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you, you got to remember, everybody on that special teams – you know, they knew who they who we had. Yeah. So whenever Devin went back, it was more of them going out. Watch, we're gonna we're gonna set him free. Yeah. You know, we're gonna get him in that end zone. So it was the momentum every time that that the special teams went out there. Yeah. Like they were dogs for him. I'm yeah. so glad he finally got the call. And for yeah. Canton, yes. I was infuriated that he wasn't first ballot. Absolutely should have been. I, I was upset. Really know, but- I was upset, but you know, I'm I'm less upset because the 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 process that it takes to get there. Right. You know, once you once I understand the process, like it, then it to me it's just it's I'm happy he's there yeah. because he deserves to be there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that deserve to be there, but the process to me, um, I think it's I think the process it's, sucks. I it's stupid. Mm. It's yeah. stupid. No, I, obviously everyone's very happy. Was that what was it like? Obviously, are right, you just gonna stop? You know, three and out. And obviously, you know, you're probably winded. You just win a series. Like, was it always like, all right, I gotta, I'm got, i watching this. Hester, do oh, yeah. this before the offense takes the field. But, shit, me and, me and Brian, we would stand up. We would be on the sidelines watching. We'd watch other linebackers. Okay. You know, we yeah, watched yeah, other right. – I like to watch other defense, especially if it was a good defense. Mm-hmm. You know, we're playing the Ravens. Like, I'm not – we're going sit down for a second, listen to what the coaches have to say, and then we're back on the field. I want to see, yeah. you know. I want to yeah, see the Niners. Yeah. I want to see what Navarro Bowman and all these guys are doing. Yeah. You know, and I guess – like football is, we, we really love it. Well, Students. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Sp- speaking of that, obviously, I'm sure you're very hypercritical of linebacking play when you're watching. Um, going back to the general manager move, when you watch Edwards and Edmonds, did we make the right call going with those two over Roquan Smith? We yes. did. Absolutely. Wow. Whoa. Absolutely. Um, so, if you if you, you would have asked me this Alex question, Brown on that too. if you, if you <laughs> would have asked me that question, Early in the season, I would say uh, highly in question. But TJ Edwin, Edwards really turned it on. Yeah, he, did. he was all over the place, you know, and he, he was playing that weak side linebacker position that I'm really familiar with. Yeah, you know that and one. And he was a dog, yeah. you know. Um, Edmonds, to me, he really turned it on on the back end of the season. He, would, to, he missed a lot of tackles. You know, he missed a lot of tackles. I called, I called my guy Bob Babbage, who coached him too, yeah. and I was like, "Listen, your guy is missing tackles, man. <laughs> you know, he's missing plays and opportunities." But he started to me. He started to shore that up, and they started getting picks. They were all over the place, getting sacks. So, a combination of all those things, to me, that trickle down with as soon as they traded for Sweat, the, yeah, the entire unit, you it, know, it changed, right? It changed overnight. Yeah. Changed overnight. All right, hey, let's take a quick break from Lance Briggs, and let's talk about our friends at ChevyDriveChicago.com. The auto show may be over, but the best deals at your local Chevy dealer are still going. If it's time for your new car, look at your local Chevy dealer because they have something for you. The all-new Equinox, the Trax, and Blazer are SUVs you'll want to test drive and drive often. Giving everything from style to comfort, safety, and plenty of room, there's a Chevy SUV for you. So we got a rental car. And what do we get, Dave? We got a Chevy Suburban, and I almost wish we would have taken that the whole 1,800 miles here from Chicago instead of that hot-ass plane because that plane was miserable. It's so comfortable. It's huge. Yeah. It's a tank. 
You yeah. feel like you're the king of the road. Yeah. You got a suburban. You're like perched up on a ledge yeah. almost, yeah. like a throne. No one can mess with us. It was great. Yeah. We had the Bluetooth going. We were listening to the podcast. Uh, we were uh, we, we were like in heaven. In yeah. That yeah. Like, honestly, that might be a more comfortable bed than some of our Airbnb. Yeah. It was we great. Got, we got six big boys and all the camera equipment, and there's still room for days. Everyone's so Everyone's Chevy's fit. the best. Um, so head to ChevyDriveChicago.com to learn more about these cars and find your local Chevy dealer today. All right, let's hop back into Briggs. Well, that's something I'm interested in too. Obviously, you talk, we talked about Flus a little bit earlier and how disappointed we all were after that week one game. We talked to Erlacher last year, and he's a big, like, stop blaming the coaches, it's the players. Are you more like, hey, the coaches need a lot of blame too? Or are you kind of in that camp where it's like, no? when Because the coaches always get blamed, right? Are you more like the players' camp? It's, it's the guys on the field. I'm both. Yeah. I'm Which, both. Um, I think that coaches help instill the habits and the habits are displayed on the field. Mm -hmm. So if I'm seeing bad habits on the field, it falls down from what either you're allowing or you're not, you're not understanding, you know, as a coach. So yeah. uh, when I see defensive guys that are on the field and I see them not communicating with each other, I don't see them. I see them silent. And then I see, you know, a, a pick route and, and a wide receiver runner wide open. To me, you have bad habits. Yeah. Yeah. You're not communicating, you know, and you don't know where your other guy is going to be. You don't know how to play them. So to me, if those habits aren't being instilled by the coaches, you know, this is the product that you're going to get on the field. Yep. Yeah. Is there a, a good habit and a bad habit of the defense last year that you particularly noticed? So, yeah, there is. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> our defense – our defense didn't, to me, challenge the receivers enough for my taste. Okay. And when I say that, meaning you don't have to be in a blitz, but I didn't see them up pressing receivers, like challenging them. Because okay. everything's built off timing. Yeah. So if you can disrupt their timing, you, just, you can just disrupt four seconds, then your DBs can make plays. They, can, they don't have to worry about the, the double moves, anything mm -hmm. like that. They can jump routes. So I saw our defense played back, and they did it pretty much the whole season they played back and they allowed free releases by their by the team's receivers now I watched them do it against the Kansas City Chiefs the following week the Chiefs might have played I don't know who they played maybe maybe they played the Ravens and almost every play they're up and they're pressing mm -hmm. you know and they're giving uh, Patrick Mahomes a hard time and so you know just philosophy wise that's what Eberflus wants to do yeah so that is philosophy it's not personnel like, does he just think that Steve, we got a rookie in Stevenson? Maybe that's not Jalen's strong suit. That might be. Okay. That might be. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't know. You know, all the coaches that have coached under that tree that I've been around yeah. have all like you, you would press. You would press receivers, or you would challenge him. You know, and, but it's work. Yeah. Whatever he's doing, it's, it yeah. it starts working. So I'm not. I'm not questioning him. I'm with you. I like you know when guys I mean? are aggressive. Be aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go and hit someone in the mouth. Yeah. That's the way I like to play. I kind of like going back to that game where the first memory you have is someone, that Cutler story. Do you have your first memory with Rex Grossman? Or a, a is it memory? at a frat house or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, shoot. Or Orton or what any was, one of those quarterbacks. Or, anything. Or, or, yeah, or, like, um, that I can tell? <laughs> you can tell <laughs> anything. <laughs> we could always cut no, it. Yeah. You know, we had uh, – I forget the, the – the restaurant is closed now. I think it was called Japone. I don't know. You guys remember this one? But yeah. We had a – when the season finally started, all the rookies, we had a, a dinner. We're like, we're all going to meet at Japone. It was like off of Chicago, right off the bridge. You know, right okay. when you come off the bridge right there. And, um, and it was – because I didn't talk to Drex that much. So that was an opportunity. I was, it was me and Bobby Wade because we both came from Arizona. And we talked, and so it was It was a group of us, and it was us just really – it was our first time really kind of going around the table. You know, we're, we're taking our, our little sake shots and stuff <laughs> and just talking about how we feel about the game, you know, how we feel about each other and how we feel about the game. And, uh, and where we were, like, where, what our situations were, because all of our situations were different. Mm -hmm. You know, Peanut on defense, Peanut was getting reps with the ones. You know, at that time – I was getting like a rep with the ones. I was more yeah. with the twos and threes. So it was one of those, we was like, Peanut, you're like, you're going to start soon. You know, yeah. 
you're like the older guys are playing special teams and you're playing with the ones and Rex is r moving in with the ones. So it was one of those deals where we, we just really went around the table and talked about what our situations were, you know, and that's one thing I remember about yeah, Rex. About Rex. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's good. What was your impression of him when you're like just going up against him in practice or in training camp where you're like, this is a guy or you're like, we're in trouble. I didn't. I wouldn't even. I didn't even think about it like that. Okay. At that time, you just focus on your. I was. I'm like, man. I gotta. I gotta make this roster. Yeah. You know, and I gotta beat this guy out. So my whole thought process wasn't even. It was. I mean, shoot. At that time, Brian wasn't. Brian didn't even talk to me at that time. You yeah. know, rookie year, he wasn't talking to rookies. Yeah. Older guys. You know, you yeah. had to. You had to earn that right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is well, that that's kind of a lost art now, isn't it? Or, or you think it still kind of happens? It is. Yeah. In a in a lot of ways. You know, I'm not in that. I'm not. I'm not on the field with them anymore. Yeah. But I, I saw a little bit of a transition. Like it's to me when I, when I got into NFL, the, the leaders in the, the locker room. Well, the locker room leaders were always the, the linemen. You know, the yeah. O linemen, the D linemen. You know, linebacker types. The, yeah. the, the, the guys who, who are in the mix the most. Yep. You know, I think there's been a big shift toward the leaders in the locker room becoming like the receivers. You know, I mean, hmm. the quarterbacks have always been there. They always will be. Uh, yeah. But like receivers and and some of the the outside guys. Okay. You know, and that's. Uh, I mean, that's. I think that's where the NFL wants it to go. It's kind of weird to me. You know, it's, it's a little not where weird I to want me. it to go. Right. That's, yeah. yeah just yeah, the kind of the way the league has changed. Like yeah. you need that elite wide receiver. You know, you need that yeah. Jamar Chase yeah, and Justin yeah, Jefferson. Yeah. You need those guys. DJ you Moore. Do. I mean, they're 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 super ultra talented. You know. But in order for a receiver to get the ball, there's a lot that has to happen. Like there's a lot of grunt work in in the in the mud, you know, yeah. where where the D linemen, O linemen, you know, the running backs, everybody making the protections and stuff to get the ball out, you yeah. know. And so it's I think those positions are are more commercialized. It's easier. It's easier mm -hmm. to sell. Yeah, well, I got gotcha. you. Um, is there a uh, is there a guy who on the defense who you think? is a little bit of an unsung hero. Who didn't get enough dap during those years where the defense was awesome? Are we talking about our defense? Because yeah. yeah, I was going to say defense. Jack Sanborn, man. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Jack right. Sanborn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now. We All got right. Jack Sanborn. All right. Yeah, we, could do it. we could do it then you and now. Know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Jack is a dog, and I think every time he gets in there, he, he makes something happen. Um, what I love about Jack is Jack understands he has, uh, he has this nature about him where – he understands angles, and he understands how to get a guy down in the open field without letting them get yards. You know what I mean? And I'm, people don't understand it, but there's an art to this. Mm -hmm. There's a real art to be able to tackle a guy and understand, like, because what you see in the NFL, you see a guy grab him, and then he falls for three yards. Yeah. yeah. It's always, like, three yeah. yards. It's like, okay, you had him here, now B it's a first down. Big difference between second and eight and second and five. Right. Yeah. Right. And some yeah. people think, you know, you go through your fundamentals – and then when you when you get your hands on a guy, the play's over. It's not that's the beginning of the fight. You know, you get your hands on him, I gotta bring his ass back yeah. so that he can't get a first down. You know, and so I think Jack has mastered that and he's a young player. Is it is that coaching or is that instinct? Instinct. Instinct. I think it's well, it's both. Okay. Or do you have to be both, coached at it, it like fourteen to be able to do it? It's it's very it's instinct. Okay. But it's you're, I guess when you're in the NFL, you're surrounded by a lot of guys that have that same instinct. Yeah. So, you, you know, if if I grab a guy, if I grab a guy and the first down is two yards in front of us and I'm pulling mm -hmm. and I get hit from behind and I look at it's one of my teammates, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, you just pushed us for a first down <laughs> right, instead of yeah. grabbing and pull back. Yeah. So, I think that instinct, you see it in the NFL a lot yeah. more than you do at college Other, or high yeah. school. Yeah. Right? So, it sounds like you like our defense a lot. Oh, I love our defense. Yeah, Kakur. Well, so what? Very you think bullish. we just need someone on the other edge of Sweat and a safety yeah, to replace Jackson, or what do you think? Like, what's all your, right? So, like, yeah. what do we really we need? need to, we need to that next level. We need a three technique. Yeah, okay. we need a three technique. Now, um, we went. I went through a lot of names, but I just watching this kid Murphy from Texas. Oh yeah, Byron Murphy. Right. Yeah. Um, he played a lot of nose, but. I think he's I think he's the guy. Okay. For a three? For a three technique. He's six one, three oh eight. Okay. So three, yeah. You know, <clears throat> Tommy Harris was six two, two ninety seven. But the way that this guy moves, the way he's disruptive, you know, 
I think he's the guy. He's a problem. Okay. Right. Yeah. I think he's the guy. Um, and I think he's better than a lot of the three techniques that I saw. I like Jerzon. I okay. like him. But I think this guy is different. Uh, Tommy Harris was such a beast. Yeah. He, was, he was an animal. He's, He's a special. freak. He's yeah, a freak. Man. And yeah. I never – I thought I had played with good D linemen. Yeah. And then I saw Tommy, like I'm in practice, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you're building your Bears D, like we got to go play with more. He's your three technique easily, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, I mean, that's the most important position on the, in the, on the defense. Yeah. I mean – You know, he causes – he creates for everybody else. Yeah. Because you have to account for him, and you yep. have to account for him right now. Mm -hmm. So he creates for everybody else. We get him. Um, uh, Sweat's going to be even more dominant. We still need to get another guy on the other side, but I think uh, Walker, some of the other guys, will benefit yeah. from the Heavy. three. Okay. Yeah. From that three. Uh-huh. All right, then. Anything like else that. before we wrap this up? Or we? It's, I, I just think it was kind of funny because we, we interviewed you back in 2019 over Zoom or a phone call or something stupid. It was – Mm -hmm. And uh, that was post double doink, and but everything was still looking up, you yeah. know. And here we are, four years later. <laughs> we thought one. we were going to have a few playoff, at least wins in that mix, <laughs> you know. We're back to square one, talking about quarterbacks again. And head not in Chicago, again, but yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming on. It's always yeah. a pleasure running it, running it back with you, talking yeah. to some. You know, old I, times I and new love times. talking to the guys from those teams. Yeah, because you still say we. You know, oh yeah, like oh, you yeah, still yeah. like you guys. It wasn't. It, it was like more than a job. Or more, yeah. it, like you guys. You guys are the Chicago Bears still. Listen, so I love. I love when you guys feel it. It feels like we're all in it together. Oh yeah, it's yeah. all you guys Listen, that we I'm, talk to yeah. too. Yeah. Listen, I bleed orange and blue. You yeah. know, I, I told my. I told my boys. I said, listen, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm in your corner yeah. for the, for the rest of your life. You know, I'm in your corner. Mm -hmm. But if you play for Green Bay, I'm not wearing those colors. Like, I'm not wearing yeah. them. I will support you, yeah. but I'm not wearing them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not wearing them. Yeah. I you're, love that. You're so right, that. though, because none of us were alive in 85. So you guys yeah. are like, you, you're our you're guys. Our, yeah. You're our yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're our guys. God and damn that's, fucking rain, man. And it shows. <laughs> God damn rain. It, show, it shows, too, like, yeah. how good those defenses were, the staying power, because 18 was amazing. Yeah. You know, Mac, yeah. Hicks. Yeah. Uh, they were amazing. But it was it fell off Not pretty quick, same. man. Really fast. Oh, off a cliff. Yeah. So it, did. Yeah. it was amazing what you guys were able to do. And honestly, we can't thank for you enough so for long. coming out, dude. Yeah, thank you, man. Was, we, we had Erlacher on a while ago, and he was talking about those defenses. He's like, you know, Briggs didn't miss a run fit for eight years. You know, yeah. like he just, he never, like he never missed. And it right. was like everybody was always doing their job. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was great to watch. You guys were a joy to watch. It was fun, man. Yeah. It was a hell of a ride. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. And, um, now it's fun watching all these juniors. Yeah. You know, Harrison Jr., you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. just seeing all the – I don't like kids. that. I actually don't old. like that either. Joey, Porter, old, Joey Porter, Porter Jr. Porter Jr., yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really cool. I, all the time I'm kids, uh, people are like, hey, you should come back. You should play. No. I said, but if you wait a little bit longer, the junior's coming. <laughs> yeah. All right? Yeah. 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 You can wait. You For got sure. a junior? I got a junior. Oh, yeah. let's go. There you go. A junior. How old? He, so here's this is crazy. Uh, he's he's three years younger than Erlacher's son. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, he was going to Notre Dame. Okay, so, right. Yeah. He was yeah. going to Notre Dame. So it, crazier things have happened. Yeah. All right. Get, get them both there. I'm, I'm three years younger than Brian. <laughs> yeah. He's three years younger All than right. his son. All wow. right. Who knows? That would be great. Right? We'll see you guys at Notre Dame. <laughs> what position is your kid? Linebacker. Okay. okay. All right. So linebacker. That, right now, Brian's son is a safety. Is that? Yeah. But he's going to outgrow that. That's how Brian started. Yeah. He's going to be a linebacker. Yep. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Yeah. No shit. That would well, be great. Well, anything we got want to get out there to, to plug, promote, anything like that? Uh, I'm good, brother. I'm yeah? good. Thank you. Sweet. You're the man, dude. Appreciate the you coming best. out. All right, yep. man. Appreciate All right. you. Yep. yep. All right. Hey, thank you to Lance Briggs. Uh, that was fun. That was Wait. great. Trip down memory lane, some debate about the current team. Like It doesn't get better. And I said this at the end of the interview. I love how much he still loves the Bears. Yeah. So many guys are just like, hey, that was my employer for a bit. Mm -hmm. He is. He is... He lives and breathes it, so that, it's great to see. It seems to be common. Like we, same with thing with group. Alex Brown. Obviously, yeah. he's very vocal about what he wants the Bears to do as a fan. Um, Brian, same thing. Uh, and I love how like we always talk about their group chat. Like you know that thing's just firing off. What the fuck? What the fuck was <laughs> Eberflus doing? Right? You know that they're, they're fans. Yeah. They're fans. You know, but they also lived it. It's, yeah. yeah, cool That's guy. Great. Goddamn fucking. Didn't rain. comment on it. He's got Python arms too. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. still he's still a load. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so let's uh, get into it more. Before we do that, I want to talk about Stella Blue Coffee. At Stella Blue Coffee, we believe good coffee is one of life's non-negotiables. Stop drinking those boring, tasteless, big coffee beans and turn to Stella Blue. Remember, your mornings are sacred. It's time to start treating them that way. Not only are Stella Blue Coffee's premium beans sourced with the most coffee-rich geographies on earth, but they are big cat tasted and approved, which is obviously more important. Stella Blue Coffee's delicious roasts are available in cold cup and cold brew, K-cup, ground and whole bean formats to seamlessly fit into your morning coffee routine oh and every bag sold help save dogs which is great uh take back your mornings today by heading to sellabluecoffee.com use promo code mid for 20 percent off any order of 25 dollars or more or find stella blue coffee on amazon available for next day delivery again promo code mid for 20 percent off any order of 25 dollars or more on sellabluecoffee.com get your coffee help a good cause dave you rescued ace right i sure did i rescued george great who did you rescue right oh wait you hate dogs (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, let's just been was, doing the podcast for five years let's just keep just keep trotting that one out there it's not true um moving along let's get into uh i feel like we didn't give like the proper send-off to the chelios night and the patrick kane day okay because it was kind of the tuesday show and we're kind of more about you know yeah wisconsin dolls and shit like that and and rico's brain oh my god yeah. that was that was unbelievable. Yeah. But, yeah. So You said you had thing, something. Yeah, yeah, one thing that I want to say was, uh, and I, I think I said on this podcast when it when it was announced, where I was kind of iffy on it. I was iffy on it because obviously. Ongoing? He, I know, iffy on him getting retired. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. like, kind of like, oh, you know. Red Wings, yeah. Yeah, Red Wings and like, like the team's success. Obviously, they made the cup. They went to the finals yes, and like the finals. they were. They won the President's Trophy one year. Like, they were a very good team kind of until, like, 98. Yeah. 97, 98. Yeah. But, like, you know, let's, let's, let's face it. It's not as, like, slam dunk as, like, no, other Duncan people. Duncan Keith. It wasn't as slam yes. dunk yeah. as Duncan Keith or yeah. something like that. So that's why I was very I – was, I, was, I was a little on the fence. Just apprehensive, so to speak. But after going and after talking to so many people there, it was, like uh, – it was it really changed my mind to being a no-brainer. Yeah. It was – people in that atrium – like and it was a Chicago factor that like kind of really won me over. People in the atrium, you were talking like, "Hey, what's going on? Who do you know here?" It's like, "Oh, well, I like uh, I my boat dock is right near Chelly's in the uh, in, in like Michigan." Cut. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then it was like, "Oh, this person's like, how do you, how do you know?" It's just like, "Oh, well, uh, uh, he just used to come to our tailgates once in a while, and he's there." So it's just kind of the way that Chelios kind of operated his way around town and seeing how cool it was that he had all these people from different walks of life, from Eddie Vedder to just some dudes, re- regular Chicago yeah. Southside dudes that are like our age that he tailgated with. Police was officers. Really, yeah, 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 like cops and firemen. It yeah. was really cool to see yeah. that aspect of Chelios. Well, I said he should be the mayor. Like that, yeah. like if he wasn't, if his quality of life wasn't better than any other person I've ever come across, which it really seems like it is, does his boat, Pushes some tequila around. Goes to Barcelona River North and Go- eats a bunch of chicken wings. Tacos. He likes tacos, the tacos, tacos there. Yeah. You know, and he goes to games. He does the ambassador thing. He's got his family around. Like, you, he just get the vibe that he just does whatever he wants to do and he loves his life. But I do think that he has, like, the if he really decided, hey, I want to be the mayor to, like, clean up Chicago, Chelly, I think he could do it. I think, I think you're right, dude. Yeah, I'm not even joking. Yeah, I really yeah. do think you're right. I think I think he would do I, I think he would do numbers and polls. I, I people agree. would be surprised by. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, we got, got some cake, chocolate, cake, chocolate cake, cake, cake shakes. Chocolate cake shakes Need coming those? in. Yeah, why not? Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I think he. I, I really there might be something to that. Yeah. I don't think he'd want to do it. But no, he would never do <laughs> yeah. it. But no. he could. Yes. Look at that. That's it's beautiful. a 10 out of 10. And, like, the, the, you're right about that with the Chicago thing. That's a big factor. He was the best defenseman or, or a top yeah, three defenseman. Yeah, three Norris's. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, the guy, One, the guy with us, like, on the ice, he's he's incredible. Yes. And, you know, he was a captain here for a long time, too, you know, six, seven years. So he really was, to, in my head, if I'm like, how, what's a perfect defenseman look like? It's him, mm-hmm. you know, because he had the offensive game. He fought guys, you know, pretty regularly. Great defensively, physical, good skater, not overly big, better condition than anybody. And, like, that goes to the point where it was like, this guy just does whatever he wants to do. At 
he he loves hockey. At 46 years old, he played 50 games in the minor leagues. Yeah, because he's just like I, I'm a <laughs> hockey player. Shelly's on the Wolves now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. He was like, got traded to Atlanta or something. And I also heard another quote somewhere this weekend where the GM of the Red Wings in 2009 came to him and was like, do you want us to trade you back to the Blackhawks? Because they were on their ascent. And they probably could have used him still at that point. Like He probably would have been in their third pair, maybe maybe not play every night. But he's like, you know, I had my time there. Like, let those guys do it. And uh, he'd been gone a decade. Like, it would have been a little bit awkward. But he he just had, like, he... he a sense of pride and and like he felt like he always wanted to do things the right way yeah and uh yeah, well, and he was great it was like an irrational meathead take of like oh he played for the red wings for so long he won cups with them like what you know yeah it's more like a on ice individually obviously had yeah. much success the team as a whole had some they went to they went to the cup but i mean it's hard to win the stanley cup so hard yeah it's so, so hard. you they're the best team in the league got swept in the first round the next year they went to the finals lost to mario lemieux and yamir yager but they they went to the conference finals in 95 they lost the avalanche in 96 like they were always in the mix when he was there yeah and now he's like swung into a, a situation now where he'd be like Maybe one of my dream guests for the show now. Absolutely, like, I, like, yeah. We, we need to somehow get him on. I have his number. Yeah. We've been trying to work it out. <laughs> he but doesn't know who you are. I've <laughs> been, I know. But it's one of those things where I would, you know, if you meet someone over 10 times, no, and I don't care who it is, 10 times a lot of times to, like, not remember somebody. I've met him at least that many times now in the last three, four years. It doesn't bother me at all. Because yeah, it's just whatever. like everybody, I feel like he has these interactions because every he has like this magnetism Everyone where it's him. like he's this larger than life, but he's also approachable, which is why he has like, oh, I was his tailgate buddy. Oh, I was a Chicago police officer, oh, you know, like these mm -hmm. regular Chicago guys that he just makes a connection with. Like He's just the best. Yeah. So no, it, and, it and that sweet. group, too, like that 90s Hawks, like went to the atrium before the game for the panel. And it's Roenick. And it's, you know, Belfour. Belfour and all these, you're just like, man, and like, they're still all buddies and they still love, they still love Chelios and even the guy like Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan had a, had a funeral that he had to go to. Otherwise he was going to be there, but he sent in like a video and it's like, you've been one of my you know best friends for 30 years now. And it's just like, Chel like the, his crossover into other realms. I don't think there's any other hockey player. Certainly. I don't know how many other athletes are like that. Yeah, or like John McEnroe and yeah. like Theo Epstein. It's like Kid Rock, Kid, Kid Rock. Rock, yeah, uh, Dennis yeah, Rodman. Yeah, yeah. Dennis he Rock, got a big yeah. pop. Like yeah. it was just truly one thing. I'm very happy that I went to because yeah. the who's who and just like seeing how much of an impact Chelly left yeah. on these guys was like, wow, this guy's fucking yeah. he's real Chicago. It's I like, talked to a couple of his kids that night too. Great, like yeah. just like uh, Jake, good dude, uh, Kaylee. Scott knows her. Darling knows her very well. Yeah. Says she's the best. Uh, she was o overdue pregnant, yeah. too, and rocking out in the front row to Eddie Vedder. Yeah. <laughs> Nine months pregnant. So they they're, seem like they're just a fun family, and uh, and they are as Chicago as it gets. And the, the Kane section of his um, speech. Perfect. Was like, we both talked. We're like, man, it kind of started to get emotional. Oh, yeah. Like, it was like, like literally, people are just clapping. Like he just like he had a quick line of like don't steal my thunder today like yeah. he will go down as the best American yeah. born hockey player of all time, and it was like my about like, am I, like yeah you, you got to chill yeah. Bit, yeah well and especially because Pat Pat Foley was the MC which I also liked yeah. uh, that you know and I'm sure Chelios had to insist that it was him, and uh, so it was it was Foley and Foley did a line about the greatest American hockey player ever, and I was like, and with Kane on the bench watching and i was like okay and like that's a fair take if somebody wanted to have that take especially a guy at foley's age fine yeah. but it's caner so i, I liked that chelios circled back to that and you know had a, had a fun moment with with 88 too yeah and, and, and i think the home crowd obviously all of chicago everyone who's in that building did a great job yep. saluting Kane. Like yep. he did when it was on the ice, he did Triple. three laps. Yeah. Three laps. Nobody I've never clapped more to game in my life. It oh. was a, it was a lights out anthem. You're clapping yep. for Tully the whole time. And then Kane obviously like you just couldn't stop clapping for the and guy. It, it was one of those I was actually worried about this for like the, the, the tone of the game. I thought people might be a little bit exhausted. 
like for the actual game because you had the panel beforehand, then you had a 30 minute speech with all the celebration, then the anthem. And it's like now we got to play a hockey game. We've been doing stuff for three yeah, hours, yeah, yeah. and then the, ho- the and the game was great. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, Felino, I think let his you know the puck went off his nut and into the net, so he got the goal. But it could have been Bedard's goal. Like Bedard was involved in that play, and then for Kane to get the winner, it was like. It's kind of like everything you wanted. It, re- it really did. It, it was a special night. Yeah. And, and it's weird to say that, I know, because we had the argument Tuesday. Yeah. The Blackhawks lost, but it really was a special night. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I bet you even, like, Kyle Davidson wants to lose that game. Yeah. And the Wings are, like, the hottest team in the league right now. They think they've won, like, six in a row. They uh, they played Washington last night, pumped them eight to three. Like, they're feeling it now. Yeah, yeah, Like, no. they're – like they're, and, I, and you're probably going to hate this comment, too, but as, like, a hockey fan purist – it's time for the wings to be relevant again. Like they're no, no, no. I don't hate that. Okay, it, it's fun. Like I no. want a reason to hate them. Yeah, and I, it's you can't hate a doormat. They've no, been a right. doormat yeah. for far too long. long time, yeah. So they're gonna be they're they're yeah. in the and I kind of feel the same way about the Flyers. Like the Flyers are kind of back a little bit. There are certain teams that make the league better they're and more fun, them. and they're, they're they're definitely on that list. Yeah. And Chicago's on that list too. And we got to get back. Dylan Larkin, they, that guy played for some really shitty Red Wings teams. I know. Teams. Some I really know. I'm, glad, I'm glad they gave him that big extension because they'll be good you know, with him now. He's yeah. still pretty young, but like he'd been there for six years as like the only, like on an island. And they <laughs> go out and get fucking Debrinket. We didn't even talk about that. Yeah. Debrinket, Debrinket Dude, had Debrinket, a goal, too. Nobody had their, their star <laughs> stolen more yeah, than Debrinket. Yeah. And crazy. I don't know what kind of like he, – he's a weird one because – he came in after they never they never made the playoffs with him. Yeah. So, yeah. but he was he was a good soldier and like a fun player to watch. He's a, he's a little guy. He's five six, like an easy guy to root for. Mm-hmm. And um, but yeah, that was like he had he had the go ahead goal right to make yeah. it two one, and then the Hawks tied it. And uh, so yeah, you know it was it was just it was an incredible night. It, and I was like the, it got to the tribute video. A tribute video I thought was just gonna break us all. It was it was fine. What did you think of it? I thought it was cooler than emotional. I thought like the details yeah. about like making it very '90s kind of basement theme. Yeah, I thought that was like a, it was an interesting touch. It was an unusual. It's not the typical highlight tribute yeah. video. Yeah, and I I wasn't as emo as you're right. It was, it was more, more. It was more fun than emotional. It's a good it's a good, it's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah, and I did love like you visibly saw on Kane's face like he felt. He felt it. Oh, you're you know? talking about Canes. No, no, no. no. Well, uh, Chelios? Canes, no, Canes speech. Yeah, oh, Canes, Canes, Canes. No, yeah. I thought, I don't know. I was kind of like. Really? During the video? Yeah, because okay. it, it's like, it's so. I think the song matters in those a lot. Yeah, I do too. Definitely. Yeah. But it, it was just so. What they play? Sarah McLaughlin or like. It, was. it, wasn't, voice. it wasn't like very much like. I was just like in another realm, you know, like yeah. that was. But he like that. He was every good memory that we had in this town for over a decade. You <laughs> okay, know? can I play devil's advocate on just Chicago sports teams as a whole regarding like memories on past players and past teams can, and like? Yeah, I am so sick of talking about the 1985 Bears and the 2005 White Sox and soon to be the 2016 Cubs. And what the the Blackhawks dynasty in the 1990 Bulls because we haven't had a fucking winner. When can we retire that and I, just stop fucking doing I, it? The, I think it's time for the 85 Bears. I mean, I don't. I yeah, feel I like mean, they don't get. 2016 is not that long ago. No, yeah. I understand. But you, my point yeah. is, is like these organizations suck the teat of their past success. And I think it's so definitely time. Much. I mean, we're coming up on 20 years of both. Chelsea Dagger would be a good start, I think, to for the Blackhawks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I would. I'm so. They'd sick. have to get it right. But I wouldn't care if they change it. They I know change it. it's they changed everything else. Yeah, you know. Uh, I'll tell you one thing though that I was like, kind of hu- like hoping that they would do. I don't know if you noticed, know but you walk into the atrium and they have a Chelly a, a black '90s Chelios jersey on Jordan on Jordan on the that, statue on the statue. Uh, Brent Seabrook was wearing it. Connor Bedard came into the rink wearing it. If they just ate the fine for having an unsanctioned uniform or whatever against league rules. Like, hey, we're wearing the black Blackhawks, the All Blacks, for that for the whole game. Yeah. That what, would have been. What's the significance? I'm sorry. They're just like a cool third jersey that John McDonough. Remember John McDonough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. The story goes: John McDonough goes, 
like every fan loves them. It's like they're just, you know you know the, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah they're so clean they're so sick looking they're just like a perfect it's like a perfect alternate jersey and it's very it's associated with the '90s. Taves and Kane wore them uh, their rookie years only, and then John McDonough was like, eh, I don't like them. Got rid of them. So we haven't had them in you know 16, yeah. 17 okay. years now. And like but like Chelios and Amani and those '90s teams are kind of synonymous with it. So when I saw it everywhere, I was like. I hope Danny's just willing to stroke a check Can't to just be do it, and yeah. just wear them. That would have been nice. That would have been cool. Um, all right, then, boys. That was uh, a great night, and this was a great podcast. Shout out again to yeah. Lance Briggs for coming out. We got a big week out here. We got some of the Cubs coming by. We're going to talk to well, Bellinger. We? Okay. We're going to talk right. it all. So all uh, right. there will be more shows in the future. I think Ian Happ stopping by Justin Steele. So yep. uh, we got some other good stuff coming. But once again, thank you to Portillo's. That was a fun draft, fun yep. interview, and fun reminiscing about Chelios and Kane. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time.